from the temples of Cairo to a dinner table in Mississippi to a porch in Germantown. For generations, children have sat at the feet of elders and listened to the history of a people. In Philadelphia, it was pretty rough to me because you couldn't get work. So many people had lost money. And everywhere as you go, they wouldn't be hired. They would be letting go more people. And it seems though, my people, the black people, were being let go during that time, more so than the other race of people. And we, as a black race, I feel we suffered a lot in uh, that time. Children of the Great Depression were burdened with their own concerns. My mother was very encouraging. My father left everything, the raising of us, to her. And she told me, she said, India, she said, I used to worry about the fact that in high school, girls made fun of my clothes. And she said, if you dress your head up and get your good education, then you'll be able to dress your body up. And so I listened to my mother. And during the Great Depression, the college in St. Louis was free. It was called Stowe Teachers College, named after Harriet Beecher Stowe. And I went to college, I graduated, and I got a job teaching school. And just like my mother said, I dressed my head up. And then under the GI Bill of Rights, I went to the University of Illinois and got my master's degree in special education. Education may have provided opportunities for advancement, but not all life lessons are taught in the classroom. Many are experienced firsthand. For many light-skinned blacks, passing was a way to navigate society without the stigma, the hatred, and fear associated with being black. Some people, like Mabel, were passed, but not by choice. I don't know if you remember or know what passing means. Passing is when you couldn't go certain places unless you couldn't go certain places unless everybody looked like you. If someone looked like my friend here, she, she could step step back because she wasn't invited, but she was asked to come. During the 30s, racial injustice was common in America. However, it did not always follow blacks abroad. It's just wonderful to see, you know, how people are. And mostly, I mean, I mean, there was no place where I found any, any resentment. It was always more admiration than anything else. As I, as I said, this was several years, you know, a good many years ago when there weren't many people traveling. So I think perhaps we were the first time they had seen black women. You know, and we were very, very, we could stop traffic, you know, walking along, I happened to look out in the street, the cars were all standing still. <laughs> From the levees breaking in 1927, Mississippi, to an audience with Pope Leo, these amazing women have seen economic hardship, racial strife, and outlived many loved ones. But through it all, faith, spirituality, and the desire to help others have sustained them. There's a little saying that to live in the house beside of the road and be a friend to man. I want to be remembered, and I know I will be, of the children and the people that I have tried to help and show a better way of life. Mama used to tell us we're here to glorify God. 